we're exhausted. I know Joel Embiid is exhausted after that one. Sixers, unfortunately, fall in double overtime as we welcome you here inside our studios. This is Sixers Post Game Live, brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. Amy Fiddle alongside the coach, Jim Lynham, and our big man, Mark Jackson. And guys, I mean, the Sixers were down 20 points, and you're thinking, that's it. They're down for the count. They storm all the way back. They force overtime. They force a second overtime, and then costly turnovers. You saw the walk from Joel Embiid, and then... Just a lazy pass there, Mark, from, from Tyrese Maxey in a one-point game. It was. You know, I, I think, to me, I, I said it during a, a fourth-grade quarter hit, I thought Maxey deferred way too mm. much. I think he has to learn as a young player to play his game alongside Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris, let everyone find a place. But he's been playing lights-out basketball, and tonight he had plenty of opportunities to still be aggressive but I thought he kind of shot away for the moment just to make sure Joel got his. And, and it's not a bad, it's not horrible, but I think you got to learn to mix it up. This is a young guy, he'll learn better. Yeah, I mean, you're yelling, turn the corner, like just yes. just go. I, I mean, you've pitch. got that yeah. speed, and you didn't see that. But what we did see was an incredible game, Jim, from, from Joel Embiid. 42 points, he played 46, almost 46 minutes. He had missed close to three weeks. What a game from him, what a warrior in this one. Unfortunately, they just can't get the win. Yeah, it's a great uh, description, uh, Amy. He played like a warrior. He was phenomenal. Uh, you could tell he was exhausted. We had to shoot 20 free throws. Uh, just a tremendous effort uh, from the big guy. Uh, and as you said, probably at the end of the day, getting 20 points down. But let me tell you, to play a game like that after a 13-day road trip out west, uh, kudos to the Sixers. Uh, it was a, a really, a, I felt, a very, very entertaining game. Yeah, it was high level of basketball. D'Angelo Russell with just one after another after another. What a tremendous second half for him. And the Sixers went on these runs. They had a 24-7 run late in the third to end that one, then a 19-7 run in the fourth. It was getting down by 20 points, Mark. When you're having to climb from that kind of deficit, even if you have a 42-point game yep. from... Uh, your big man, that, that's just almost too much to ask. And then obviously Tobias Harris only had four points through three quarters. He finished with 17. But these slow starts, they, they just seem to really crush the Sixers. They do. You know, the, the way you started is, is typically sometimes can be the way you finish. And you've seen that today. I thought the Sixers ran out of gas. I thought the climbing out and then having the, the, the still having the energy to finish was half. But he fought through, like you said, the Warriors spirit led him. But I really believe that this team was just wasn't in sync mm -hmm. the first half. And then the fourth quarter is when they finally turned the corner. But Minnesota was just clicking. And that, that guy, what's his name? D'Lo, they were Andrew yep. Russell. He really put that team in his back. Yeah, D'Angelo Russell with a huge second half and a really big overtime. He had 35 points. And of course, a couple of those threes that became the dagger. Let's cross it over now. Brought to you by WebEx by Cisco. And welcome in Tom McGinnis and Ala Abdenabi. And guys, I mean, this is a barn burner. We had all these late night games, and now we have two overtimes just to really make sure we got our home welcome. Joel Embiid, what a game for him. What did you think of that last play where obviously it didn't seem – Seth Curry was open. We all saw him, but obviously in that moment, you know, where he's looking, he couldn't see Seth Curry, it looked like, Tom. Well, first of all, when you get pinned against the sideline, Tom. that's almost like a third defender. They had two guys on him, and I think the initial difficulty of just getting it in – kind of painted the Sixers into a corner right there. And so, you know, we were talking during the course of the closing possessions all about how difficult it is when you try to throw it all the way down low. Well, in this case, Joel was still 25 feet or so from the goal, a very difficult place, and they couldn't get it done. Edwards with a good defense. Yeah, I know he's your best player, but I don't know if that's the best mm -hmm. scenario for him to be out there at the three-point line with two defenders on him. I know you have to defer to him and get him the basketball. I understand all that, but you're also obliged, I think, to put him in a better situation to succeed. At the three-point line, taking on two guys, I don't like the chances there, but again, that's just my opinion, and it didn't work out either way. Yeah, we're looking at the play right now. You saw the two defenders, almost a third kind of come up a little bit. And this reverse angle, this is where we all see Tobias cuts to the rim, maybe to try to give some help. But you see Seth Curry out there clapping. But, he, I mean, at that point, there was only like half a second left on the, the shot clock. I mean, there was, it was just, a, as you mentioned, Tom, when you're right pinned against that sideline, that is an extra defender. And they had nowhere to go. Unfortunately, when you get down by 20, you're only shooting in the 30% for the first half. This is what you need. You need everything to go your way in the second half. The Sixers made a valiant effort. There are no moral victories, but after a 13-day road trip, how tough do you think this game is, and how gassed was Joel Embiid, Allah? Oh, he was. He was really tired, and you can tell, and, and a lot was asked of him today, and 
I don't think it's his fault that the Sixers find themselves losing this ball mm -hmm. game today. Uh, there was other guys that struggled, and I thought the defense, especially in the first half, left a lot to be desired. The 76ers were reacting as opposed to being the aggressors, and it showed. And I think it was tough to overcome that kind of playing uh, when you did it for three quarters. But they did do a decent job of playing better in the fourth quarter. It just wasn't enough down the stretch. Fellas, let's talk about this. I mean, let's talk about the young fellow who's been playing lights out basketball and Maxi Hut tonight. I know to me he had 15 tonight, but to me I thought it was plenty of opportunities for him to still be aggressive. I think that when he missed the three, as well as just not being on the floor, trying to make sure he deferred so much to Joel, I think it negated from his performance. Can we talk about how he still could be effective while uh, Joel and Tobias and everyone else still be effective and how that's important to have that third score out there? Well, that's going to be a key, Mark, and that's what Doc Rivers talked about pregame, and that is being assertive with those two scorers out there in Harris up, yeah. and Embiid. I thought, Allah, that you know teams play him under on screens. In other words, they're daring him to shoot. They were playing off of him, and he was a little hesitant to take those shots. Like, we're all so impressed, and understandably so, with those flying layups. But he's going to get those because that's his natural ability, and he's incredible at that. But when he, with consistency, can make those wing shots and those outside shots, that makes him a double threat. Yeah, I'd just be curious if you guys uh, would agree. I thought that, uh, looking at the numbers coming in, it said that Minnesota, a much improved defensive team. And I thought they defended pretty well over the course of the game and really played great defense on the last possession. Well, and what I was impressed with, too, on that last bucket they scored by Prince, did you see how all of them were streaking down the floor? This is a team that played last night, Coach, traveled and had to play two overtime sessions, and yet they were the ones beating everyone down the floor on that last bucket. So that's what I found to be impressive. The Timberwolves played hard today, and at times the 76ers had a hard time matching that. Yes, they did. Unfortunately, they don't get the win. It was entertaining, but we would like to get that W rather than have our popcorn all be consumed with this double overtime game. Thank, guys, thanks so much for crossing over with us. We appreciate you. We'll see you on Monday against the Mets. Antonio Nissan Game Changer, and unfortunately, it was really what made this game. And it's the Tyrese Maxey. He did this play almost three straight times. One time it was deflected. One time Joel and beat three straight this previous before that. One time Joel got it back. And this time, unfortunately, picked off Torian Prince's only bucket, Mark Jackson, and yeah, the game winner. I, you know, I think when it's th this team, I really think Maxey could have turned the corner to be a lot more aggressive versus the big that was guarding Joel. And I think a couple of times he just, you know, let me stop and make sure I get Joel the ball. And I understand. But if you turn that corner with your speed, he, I think the opportunity was there for him to get a bucket. Yeah, and Jim, this is a guy who we talked about on the pregame show. He had 300-plus minutes of six total turnovers. He was uncharacteristically a little bit sloppy. Do you think it's trying to work his way back in now that Joel Embiid is back in the game? Or why do you count for that? Uh, yeah, I think Mark is right on looking at that particular play, and it happened at least one other time. He was deferring. Mm -hmm. In other words, instead of being as assertive as we watched him be in Joe's absence, Joe's a superstar. Maxie knows that. This game is on the line. I'm, let me be Maxie a second. I'm not trying to me decide the game with my superstar mm -hmm. on my left shoulder. No, I try to drag his man away and deliver him the ball, let him decide the game. Unfortunately, the defense kind of knew that gamble a little bit and made a timely steal. Yeah, the, the bounce pass trying to thread that needle is just a really tough ask. Four turnovers, very uncharacteristic from what we've seen lately of Tyrese Maxey. But, you know, I get what you're saying. Of course you're going to go with Joel Embiid. But at some point, don't you have to maybe stop and think? And why no timeout there at the end, you think, there, Jimmy, initially? Well, uh, you know, you have a tired defensive team, as uh, Al and Tom just uh, referred, you know, who played they want to do defensively. You know, uh, no problem for me to, you know, to go what I call on the fly. Uh, sometimes you'll get a better shot trying to do that. But to, to your question, Amy, the guy's a young guy, you know, mm -hmm. a second-year player. Granted, he's had a tremendous uh, run, but uh, picture his mindset. That's Joel Embiid, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and as a result, you want to try to deliver him the ball. It just it wasn't a good enough pass to get it to him. Yeah, it was, uh, unfortunately, uh, an errant pass. It went the other way, Torian Prince with the game winner. Well, what does Doc Rivers think of this one? Let's check in now. He said this would be a game where you guys had to dig deep, and, yeah. and you did. Yeah, we did. I, I thought we were, like, running in quicksand in the first half. 
you know, I showed the guys at halftime. I think we had 12 just point blank wide open shots. All of them hit the front rim, and I, I told them, you know, get your legs, just keep, just keep playing, keep moving the ball, and I thought we did that. Uh, defensively, we had to be better than the first half. They shot 59%. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a tough game. It seemed like it really changed for you with Danny and early in the third. It just seemed like that changed everything, really, at both ends of the court. Yeah, I thought Danny spread the floor for us. Uh, you know, we used his minutes up, so we couldn't put him back in. Uh, but he, he was a big help, for sure. What did you make of Joel coming back and scored 42 and his? Uh, listen, we lost. You know, and, and Joel was phenomenal tonight. But um, you know, we still lost the game, and Joel would take 30 and win, if you know what I'm saying. So, um, but he was great. Played a ton of minutes. Uh, something we didn't. You know, you just don't know from COVID. Uh, give him credit. Uh, clearly, he's been working out, and he showed us that. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of them are one -on -one, with one-on-one -on -one coverage, and you know, he, he's a shot maker. Doc, did you feel like you got your, 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 you and your team got the most that you could out of the four offense? Yeah, overall. Yeah, overall. I mean, um, we had 30 points in the fourth quarter. If we score 30 points every quarter, I'm pretty much taking that. You know. Um, Thought we had a couple tough calls, like Tobias on the breakaway. The guy that was the guy intentionally fouled him. And it was a no call. Those are big game-changing calls. Um, you know, I didn't like how we ran the last two minutes, a minute and a half of overtime when we had the lead. <clears throat> I thought we used the clock too much. Um, we start playing clock instead of basketball. That's the only thing that I would say I didn't like offensively. In the first half, you said you missed a lot of shots that were short, but it also seemed like they really attacked the rim, and you guys really didn't the way you thought the shots we, we missed, I'll take all night. Um, we were playing more half court in the first half because they were shooting 60%. So most of their shots were going in, and we were taking it out. Second half, we got misses. We got Tyrese in, in transition, and the game changed. Um. Tyrese's last turnover, um, we kind of tell him, like, as a young guard, just sort of... Hey, it's going to happen. It won't be your last one. Like, it won't be. Um, you know, he was because Joel was popping on that play. Um, but it is what it is. You can't get it back. Move on. Uh, to get to double overtime, the, the missed free throw with the tip-in, is that something that you guys work on? Uh, yeah, really. I mean, we, we don't. I mean, we, we do the two bigs. You know, putting Drummond in, they didn't have enough bigs. We felt like one of our two bigs would be able to get their hands on the ball, and, and Drummond did. So the miss was perfect, you know. That, that's such potluck. You can sit there and shoot that 50 times. You can't miss it that well. Thanks, All right, guys, thanks. And Doc Rivers talking about that last play, obviously, where they doubled Joel Embiid. Andre Drummond able to get the miss. It was a perfect miss by Tyrese Maxey. You kind of forget that that was even the play to even get us to this mm -hmm. point. It was a perfectly designed play you're thinking mark this is what you know you practice you have to practice those kind of, it's almost like a in football practicing that on sides kick it worked perfectly andre drummond it was his only bucket and he only had three rebounds at that that was his third rebound at that point hey we'll take it, it is <laughs> only rebound we will take it drummond did his job getting there get rebounds he got in there banged and they couldn't like doc river said they didn't have enough bigs because you know this 2021 teams are lucky to have one big mm -hmm. but six have Joel and beat and andre drummond and that that putting that game in overtime helped because of those two. We're going to sing the praises of Joel Embiid, and rightfully so, with his 42 points, uh, especially after how much time he missed. But we'd be remiss not to talk about the guy you see there on your screen, though, D'Angelo Russell, 35 points. Um, it felt like every time Minnesota needed a bucket, especially late in this one, Jim, he was the answer. This guy, I mean, he certainly has a lot. In that shot. Yeah, when he's uh, right, Eamon, and by that I mean shooting the ball well, he's one of me, one of the more unguardable guys in this mm. league. Now, again, he doesn't shoot. He's uh, like a 36% free shooter, you know, which is pretty good. He's not a great shooter. But I'll tell you, he, he when he, he gets it going, he's a great scorer. He, literally, you're not going to guard him with one guy. He can put it on the floor. He doesn't go to the basket a whole lot. Slick enough to get there to keep you honest. But he just wants to free up for that perimeter shot like that. And when it's going in, he's lights out. Yes, yeah, so when you're looking at his numbers, he's 35 there. Very slow out of the gates. He had 27 points in the fourth quarter and the two overtimes. That is massive. Mark, we always talk about a closer. Who's the closer for the Sixers? Who's going to have the ball in their hands? This gentleman might look awfully nice in a Sixers uniform if that could uh, somehow be swung as a closer. 
He could. He, he would. He can do a lot of things Sixers need. He can score the ball. He also be a, he's actually a combo guard to me. I think he can play alongside Maxi in some scenarios. You know, I just think his ability to score the ball as well as shoot the ball and his cold bloodedness will help any team in Sixers primarily. Now, Anthony Edwards very quiet in the second half, but don't worry, D'Angelo Russell picked up the, the slack by right? any means necessary there. You look at eight assists. But Jimmy, I mean, it, it feels like it's been a question we've asked a number of years here. Joel Embiid obviously is always going to be your go-to guy. Is Who is the next closer? Who is the closer? A guy that you can really count on for a good bucket, maybe a three. D'Angelo Russell, as you said, one of the the coldest shooters out there, and I mean that in the best way because he just doesn't care. He's lights out, it seems like. What about maybe some kind of scenario where he might end up as a sixer, whether it's a trade or something? Yeah, uh, I have to be honest. There. I've never been a huge fan. I don't like his defense. Uh, he's a little too casual for me, but again, I give him credit. I'm not going to. He's cold blooded. There's never a shot too big or a situation in the game too big for him. Uh, now, is he, is he good enough that he's going? Uh, I'll, I'll use Daryl Morey's phrase. He's a difference maker. He certainly was tonight, so I guess he should be a candidate. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, uh, 